Temporal distortions. Ooh. Yeah. 
you a sense of worthiness. They have a strong sense of love and belonging. And those who struggle for it, folks who are always wondering if they're good enough. There was only one variable that separated the people who had a strong sense of love and belonging and the people who really struggled for it. And that was the people who had a strong sense of love and belonging.
we're gonna redo those end caps over there and put some half spring chillers right here. Then you need to cut 120 water bottle bowls in the front display. You're going to have to forgive me, but my manager never ordered any strawberries. We can honor the sale when you come back next time. basically been pushed into uh, you know the workforce against their will for the most part um, by these states that have forced them in um, you know into work that we're starting to see the spread so I'm just going to pull this tweet right here um, um, from uh, uh, Christian uh, Stefani that says that basically in Dallas um, you know Texas has been really getting hit hard over the past few weeks since they reopened foolishly I mean the governor of Texas uh, Abbott you know just said that he finds the, the increase uh, to be unacceptable, even though he's the one who's put in these ridiculous measures in the first place. So anyways, in Dallas, 80% um, of the new cases are frontline essential workers. And, you know, this isn't an isolated event. Um, I know across Texas right now, we're seeing an alarming rate of, of infections around people who are um, child care workers and basically people who've been forced, um, you know, back into work because other people have been forced into work. Right? So now you have a larger, you know, need and stress on, you know, child care, uh, you know, facilities in the state. And that's going on everywhere. So like the reality is this, is that, you know, these low wage essential workers are one, they're already being exploited, right? Um, the fact that they're being paid less, even before this pandemic, that they were being paid less than what was deemed non-essential work, should tell you, um, you know, a great lesson about capitalism is that the people who are the most critical to the system are the ones who are the most exploited, and that's because, um, you know, capitalism is a system that preys upon exploiting people and making them so desperate. The reality that so many people were making less than thirty thousand dollars a year, so that they had to work, even though they really felt that they were putting themselves or their families at risk, shows a fundamental reality of capitalism. Capitalism is an authoritarian system that does not allow people to have the freedom of choice over their own bodies and over their own you know, community because we are put into a situation where if you're not going into work, if you're not going in to be exploited by the market constantly, um, then you don't, be, you don't have a roof over your head, all these kinds of things. And look, the reality is we're dealing with this pandemic and there is work that needs to be done. We're not denying that reality. But the fact is, is that the workers, these frontline workers who are so exposed to the virus, are one, they're dealing with employers, who for the most part have been showing that they don't really care about their employees. They have not put in the kind of uh, uh, protections on the workplace that workers need to prevent the spread of the virus. Um, you see a lot of uh, employers being very timid, for example, when you have these lunatics running around in your store uh, refusing to wear masks. They're not standing up for their employees, right? Um, that's a power dynamic, right? There's a moral question there. Like if you're a small business owner and you're not taking care of your employees, yes, that's a moral question. But it's fundamentally a power dynamic that working people aren't given the freedom in this country um, to, to uh, demand and, and uh, create safe environments uh, to work during this pandemic. That fundamentally needs to change. And as we see other areas Areas of the economy start to open up in the next few weeks, more and more people are going to experience this really callous relationship between the employer and the employee when capitalists are basically going to make the decision that it's not very profitable, uh, you know, to put in the kind of uh, protections that workers need to prevent the spread of the virus. You're going to start to see that dynamic, um, you know, play out more and more.
distortions. Stoop Romans, stoop. And let us bathe our hands in Caesar's blood. Then walk we forth even to the marketplace, and waving our red weapons o'er our heads, let's all cry peace, freedom, and liberty. Stoop then and wash. Who is here so base that will be a bondsman? If any speak for him of our offended. Who is here so rude that would not be a Roman? If any speak for him of our offended. Who is here so vile that will not love his country? If any speak for him of our offended. I pause for a reply. None, Brutus, none! <laughs> I have done no more to Caesar than you shall do to Brutus.
Kamala, come, come. There's a young man with a gun. Young man lost his honey when she took it on the run. Response. Kamala, come, one. She took it on the run. Left her baby lonely, but her baby ain't gone. Space time fractures are growing stronger. We're detecting temporal paradoxes throughout the ship. Paradoxes? Internal chronometers show it's 0600 on deck 9 and 0605 on deck 13. Time's passing more quickly in some parts of the ship and slowing down in others. Maybe that explains why this coffee tastes like it's three days old. Resistance intense to intense in the distance. This was right to the existence. 
existence. I think not, therefore I am not your Negro. Reload and let me a hero. Referee spectated by every zero. Mr. Cold Blind Magician, Mr. Benio. Please, no dudes to get me out of here when scored. This is cool, so click a rebellion on my sword. Three chokes into the oasis of the ward. I was written in the skies and follow the drinking cord. The waiting, the carry the freedom. And make our people waiting in the water, can you lead them? If they don't need a leader, will you lead them or perceive them? When they're looking in the mirror, can you feel them? Do you see them? Mental freedom writers Fred Hampton 1968 and Rosa If you Parks. don't fight for change You get more of the same Here we are back in the same spot All over again
Great. Am I going to get canceled for saying temporal distortions? Specific past as much. 
temporal distortions. I just, I just want to add that thank you, and it's an immense honor to be here, including definitely with Dr. West, who is an influence on me, and one of the major reasons that he's an influence on me is because of that synthesis and the ability to hold multiple truths, that we have to have some sense of a capacity here to do something with democracy, and then also not lie and deceive ourselves about what we are and what capitalism is and what empire is. I came across a speech fragment from Martin Luther King Jr. recently, which I played on my show, and I don't know where or the title of the speech, but I thought it was so important because we've put a lot of work and we still have to put work into reminding everybody that the man was on the left. He wasn't a guy who came out once a year and said everybody should treat each other nicely. He was a serious... But the other thing that I loved about this speech, which was he talked about the fallacy that certain Christians misunderstood love as a seeding of power and then Nietzsche came along and rejected Christian morality because he thought it was denying uh, someone's vitality, the will to power in a healthy sense. And he said, love without power is sentimental and anemic yep. and power without love is abusive and corrosive. I'm paraphrasing. Yep. And that was when I saw it, I thought, well here, okay, we know the left wing Dr. King. Well, here's the Machiavellian Dr. King and I love it. I want the left to have Machiavelli so that we can have the strategy, the ruthlessness, the clarity to actually win these battles and be ruthless with institutions. And then I want us to learn how to be really kind to each other, welcoming of a broad set, and actually have a movement that has the capacity to do that. That's why the cancel stuff is relevant that Katie brought up, because it's a stand-in for this eliminationism of other humans, which is neoliberalism enacted. And it's also a contradiction from when we get utopia. It's beautiful. We're, we're the people who sit around and we say, why don't we have a world where there's no prisons? Okay. <laughs> That's a radical fucking statement. That's a real thing, and we should take it seriously. But then, on the other hand, oh, well, these people can never be part of a coalition because they made a mistake or said something. Like, it's a contradiction in what we're enacting. So what I get that I hope is in the realm of answering your question from this Dr. King clip was left wing, spiritual, but also with a vision of power. And if we can synthesize those things, I think we will speak to the highest impulses of this country. We will be welcoming to people and we will win. And I'll see you IRL, ASAP, I hope. I love you. I love you. I love you.